Yo, what's going on everyone and it's time for another On The Bench with Pete episode and today I'm going to be working on, amongst other things, my poker chip bases uh, for a commission. I know right, believe it or not, just just six of them, actually there's only five but I've thrown in another one because I was kind of, I had five there ready to go and I just thought I'd do that. It's just five uh, mud and ash um, poker chip bases, that's it. Um, and then I'm going to hopefully finish in, put, not finish in, but put in some more touches to my Space Hulk Marines to try and get them a bit more finished because they, they look kind of table ready now but I just want to put some finishing touches on them so that's what I'm hopefully, hopefully I'm going to be doing today and anything else that takes my fancy so let's get right to it Alright, so here we are, basically I'm just going to just touch up the blacks underneath, make them look a bit neater before I seal them. So I'll do that first, I think. And I had the brush in my hand just a second ago. Yeah, we we'll use we we'll use our naked brush. We will do this. Okay. All right. So here we are. Not very exciting to paint bases, I know, but you know we gotta do. It's gotta be done, right? You know, especially if you're uh, selling them. You can't expect shoddy workmanship when you're selling your goods. And you know, because it's it's so easy to do this. So what you got to prey on is people's laziness, really. That's what you got to do. With jobs like this, because anybody can do it. It's just time. It's like terrain. You know, anybody can do some sort of terrain. I'm just lazy. I'm a terrain lazy person. Terrain lazyitis, I have. I think that's what I suffer from. Well, there's one. <laughs> Not doing too many, so no need to glue the pot down. Well, you're not even going to see the underside of these bases, but um, I don't know. When you get them, take them out of the packaging, whatever, however I'm going to package them. Bag and an envelope, I guess. It's gonna pop them out, and it's gonna look good. He's gonna think, ah, might get him to do some more for me, which is kind of the plan, you know. Um, not that I want to be a commission painter by any stretch of the imagination, but you no, know, because the, the reason being, I've got too much stuff to paint for myself. But it's nice to do the old thing here and there. Of people. You know, if a club was to say to me, you 50 of these bases, and then once that's done, we'll take it from here. Yeah, you know, I can, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. No problem. Because it's, it's kind of batch done, produced, and uh, it doesn't take too long. The longest part about any of it is the dry time. I'm not one for hair dryers and things like that. I just. I'll probably end up putting a hair dryer on this and. Uh, need to do the sides again now. <laughs> Blowing it half across the room, you know? That's. That's my luck. Right there in a nutshell. Basically. I've got to, I've got to get used to doing this, making sure it's on camera. I must connect my camera up to my laptop sometime and do this and I can have the laptop in front of me sometime and easily see if I'm in shot or not if I have it projected through the screen 
That would be kind of cool. Right. Mm -hmm. Two more to go on these. Two more to go. Oh, I'll tell you something. I am so looking forward to starting my Orc army. It's untrue. And I've just begun watching the new uh, narrative campaign for Mini War Gaming. Oh man, it's brilliant. I've only seen the first one, the story time on the first mission. And I'll be watching the second mission probably tonight. Uh, the first one was really good, it was like a chase. And they were moving the terrain as well as the vehicles down the table. And it, just, it looked super awesome when they were doing it. Great, great way. Uh, it was easy enough to pick up the custom rules. I mean, they said the main ones. But, you know, it was fine doing it that way, and I was, I was happy with it. Uh, nearly done. Let's make some. Not that you're watching what I'm doing, because this is not a tutorial. But. On screen. Bases. Okay. Hoping that they won't take too long to dry. Okay, now that's them done. Now I'm going to pick up a space marine. Uh, well, uh, one of my Terminators from Space Hulk, look at him and say to myself, what's he doing? Well, not an awful lot, really. To finish up on the base a bit, that's all. Maybe give him a, oh, I've done a glaze. Yeah, so what we'll do is a, a non-oil wash. Wash my brush out in a second. And I've got a few to do. Just gonna line up a few because some of these um, you do. Some of them have been done. Not all of them. Just a couple. For non oil, my friends, non oil. So, oh, sorry from CPU. That's the trouble, you've got too much stuff on your desk. That's why I like a lot I've been going about a quarter of an hour, 10 minutes, a quarter of an hour. Just keep an eye on the time there. That's why when I saw Engineer Jeff's channel. Oh, ages ago. Oh, yeah. I should have done it as a um, YouTube channel of the week a long time ago. But, uh, you know, you got a lot of other ones to do as well. So, yeah. How tidy is his desk? Oh, it's just awesome. You know? So, gonna stick this down. You know, there you go. Blue tack on the base. So doing a few. Going to be doing a few of these. So, all right, okay. So one of the things I wanted to talk about today um, was GW's new range of airbrush paints. Now, I haven't used them as of yet. Um, when I first heard that they were doing a, a range of airbrush paints, I thought, wow, finally, they've, um, sounds like they must have been listening to someone. You know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge GW fan, everybody knows that. 
you know, to the point where I'm called fanboy and all this kind of stuff. But when I saw their paints, um, they're still in flip top. They're still in pots like this. They're not even squeezed dropper bottles. And I thought, how can you seriously do airbrush paints when you're going to do that? You know, when you when you're airbrushing, anybody that does airbrushing knows um, you got to clean it a lot. You know, you can't just let it gunk up on you. Otherwise, it will just spit the paint out, and the um, it will either stop working. You know you want it or just spit the paint out in a horrible fashion making your model look awful all right so you got to clean it quite regularly okay you got to clean it regularly as you should with any brush really um and every so often you'll give it a really thorough cleaning take it to completely the bits and clean it so you want to cut down on all the other time of stuff you, you want to be doing with paint. Like Minotaur paints and um, Viejo paints are brilliant because straight from the bottle they're already sort of mixed down to the consistency that I want. And you know, hey presto, there you go. But if I want to use specifically a GW colour at the moment, if I want the same a fist on red, then I put that in with it, mix it up in the pot, but I've got to use one of these. Get the paint out, put it in like this. Like that, you can control how much you're putting in then. But you've got to clean these out, it's twice the work. So when I thought, oh great, they're probably going to be using, you know, this kind of bottle, straight in. That cut down the, uh, the work, I didn't know. So not only have you got to clean out your airbrush, you got to clean out your um, your dropper pipette as well, and I think that's you know I love GW, um, but if they if they are just going to be normal bottles like pots like we have already, I think that's one of the craziest things they've done. I think you know it's a bit of a stupid idea really to be honest. I mean it won't stop me trying it out. Hey, maybe they've got some sort of weird dropper mechanism in it. I don't know. But from what I saw, it looked like conventional pots. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is not good. Not for me, not for what I want. But that's just my own take on it. Still love GW though. I love them. Best modelling company in the world, bar none. Make the best models as far as I'm concerned. And I love Warhammer, 40k, Fantasy, Age of Sigma. I love it, absolutely love it. And I don't like all the people that get arsy about that. You know, I just happen to think that this idea with the airbrush paints in those pots is a bit daft. Just my take on it. I mean, what do you guys think? Yeah, just my take on it. Get a few more guys. Actually, I might as well do this one while I'm there. But I don't, I don't think this base has been painted yet. But, uh, well, I'll do it anyway. So I know I've not left anyone out. Dun 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 dun. Right. So what has happened to summer then? Eh? What what happened to that? Did I blink? I must have been blinking at that time or sneezing. Um, summer was just gone before I knew. I mean, it's gone, hasn't it? Now it's autumn, really. The trees are turning, and you know, the kids are back to school today. So I'm home alone. 
Well, I, like, I like being on my own. It's just I can't believe how quick time has gone. Can't believe how quick. Blown by. Ah, oh, so what's going on with me then? Well, I'm going into uh, my my local surgery tomorrow to have my heart monitor fitted. Um, I think, and I'm hoping it's just a 24-hour thing. So you know, uh, that's going to be a pain in the neck. But I suppose it's going to be done. They want to monitor my heart. Hopefully, it will show them how good I've been with my diet and exercising. No, hopefully, my heart pr blood pressure will have come right down. I'm hoping so. I don't know what else I can do, to be honest. To be frank, I don't know what else I can do. I've been living a salt free, more exercise inclined lifestyle from the moment I was told. So, you know, I buy, I don't add salt in with my foods anymore. I don't add salt on my foods anymore. I go out of my way to look at the labels and make sure I have either no salt or very low salt foods that I consume. Um, and I exercise, so, you know, if that does, if this doesn't work, then, then I'm doomed, basically. To have uh, blood pressure medication, I guess. But there you go. Anyway, enough about that. Enough doom and gloom. Let's move on. I'm thinking I must, I must really must try and arrange a game of hordes soon, sometime soon. It's just that I've been, I've been okay with not doing it because of, I don't know, painting my miniatures. I suppose. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've got the Warmongers done for my Legion of Error Blight. But, you know, I've got uh, a couple of stingers I could do for them as well. I should, I really should do them. Then, uh, then they're done. Maybe I'll do that soon. Who knows? Who knows? Just two more guys to do. Well, oh, he's been done. Did him already. Uh, he could do it some more oil. Yeah, always blue tack the pot to my top here when I'm doing quite a few. That way when I knock it, it doesn't go flying everywhere. Cause I will never forget, not long after I first got into the hobby, I think it was Seraphim Sepia GW Shade. I, I just knocked it, it went all over the carpet and the stains are still on the carpet. Needs a new carpet in here anyway. But that's not the point. The point was it was very annoying. Right, I think. I think that's all of them. The sit down guy was done a while ago. Hmm. So that's all the bases done of the ones I was looking at. Although. Shouldn't put that away because I've got to do my jean stealers too. The same thing. Hmm. So I might start on those now as well. I'll just put this over here to remind me. I do this sort of thing. Put it there to remind me I need to map varnish them afterwards. Right, so we'll crack on with doing jean stealer stuff then I guess. So yeah, itching to get my orcs started because I can't wait because they look like and I always said this even when I first started back when huh, I'm one of these people that say back when it was sixth edition and then you hear people going oh back in fourth or fifth or third or second or whatever I used to do this oh. and I'm saying well back in sixth when I started back in sixth I said from the off they look fun. I'm not going to do them, but they do look fun. They really do. Right, okay. So I think we're doing wash on the bases. It doesn't take very long. And 
It's only printing it out. I might have to grey on that in a bit. Break it up a bit. And I'll do all these metal sections in gloss varnish to seal them. I'll probably seal it all in matte and then go over it in gloss. Because that's the way I roll. It's always worked for me. Alright, okay. Another one. So yeah, itching to get my orcs done. Because they look super fun. I mean super fun. Uh, and looted wagons and things. You can just make up anything, can't you? You can get any old stuff from eBay or wherever. Just turn it into walk stuff. It's brilliant. Really, really cool. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to doing that. A vast quest for mini wargaming. Any, any tips on how to walk stuff up? Because you know, I don't know where to start. Frankly, I have to watch. The only way I'm going to know how to do it is by watching other people's videos on how they do theirs. So I'm kind of asking for help there. Yeah. Now I'm, not, I'm thinking I'm not going to bother basing these on round bases. I might just leave them as they are. Might do. And I might get another set of jean stealers later on um, for the 40k ones because these are a little bit strange. The posing in that is awesome for Space Hulk, I think. But I'd be I'd have to put them on bigger bases than they're supposed to have in 40k. So you can see my problem. Right there. I love this one, it's just coming out the floor. That's just awesome. Love it, love it, love it. I need some more airbrushing on these. Uh, airbrushing and highlighting on the carapaces. Tongues, eyes, teeth, nails, done. So, if I can get these done today, that'll be a big chunk of work that I don't have to do again, which is cool. There you go. Hmm. I'll tell you something else I've been thinking about. It's obviously my studio, the Mini Warzone studio. Um of which the Indiegogo campaign is coming to a close in the next few days by the way um, uh, you may or may not have seen the links the video descriptions I've been putting out lately they're all in there um, so the yeah so the campaign is coming to an end soon and that'll be will not be Indiegogo it'll be Indiegongo so but thanks to all people who have contributed towards it and it'll get me once I've got it, I've secured the funds for the main project now. Um, I'll actually have a, I want another builder to see tomorrow. Uh, once I've seen him, seen what he got to say, seen his quote, I'm going to get the ball rolling. Once I get the studio built, then you should start seeing a lot better content from this channel. More battle reports, actual 40k battle reports, that'd be cool. And then I can get people in, um, in and playing, in a place where they don't mind coming, where they know, you know, they'll be safe and their their uh, their, their armies will be safe, and this be a, a cool, enthusiastic environment for the hobby in general. I said to my wife, uh, if I'm doing a battle report and I'm playing watch, you might hear me wag whilst I'm doing it from inside the house because I'm going to be a loud wag player. I love the comment. Um, it was on Mini War Game with Jay's channel. Cody Rue, they were talking about wags and the walks. And Cody Rue actually said when he was at Valhalla, every time an orc player did the wag, Every other up player in the room like threw back their heads and did wag at the same time. It was awesome. It really, really was. And I think that is just one of the most fun things I can think of. <laughs> Being in an entire room full of orc players wagging. Wah, you know, that would just be brilliant. 
It's my dream to go to Valhalla one day. Uh, one day when I've got loads of money. I don't know when that'll be. But you never know the future, right? It's my dream to go there one day. And take my family, and we all have a good time. I can make loads of videos, play loads of games, there's loads of stuff to do. And you know, everyone's a winner. Even if it's just a week or whatever, you know, I don't mind. I think it is only a week anyway, but. Just be super cool to go and do that. But anyway, I've digressed. So once I've got my studio built, I'm thinking about the table. Um, do I get an actual permanent table built and fixed in place there? Do I just use like the foldaway tables I've got and have table tops? I'm thinking that might be the way to go, not for financial reasons, but for um, simplicity and I can pack the other one away if I need to, to do different types of videos. I don't know. But either way, if I, whether I have a permanent table built or, or just a table top, all right, I'm thinking the edge, I want to have a lip around the edge of the, like, the, the table to stop dice falling off like they have in Mini Wargaming now. I think that's a super cool idea. This makes sense. I only need the 6x4 table. Then I can break that up into 4x4 when I do War Machine or whatever. You know, it doesn't need to be a big table. It really doesn't. And as the battle report that I saw in the new narrative campaign from Mini Wargame proved, this is a chase battle and they've got to get to the edge of the table and you think they need a really long table edge to do that. Oh, you know, they don't. Not with custom rules and things. Um, they were moving the terrain back as well as the pieces and, and it just looked amazing. And, yeah, and I came to realise you don't need that big of a table. Really, you don't. Um, 6x4 is adequate. More than adequate. Um, sure, I feel the need to expand it though. Folding table would probably give me the best option. Um, so I can just get another tabletop or breakaway tables and fix them together and I don't know, I'll figure something out. I'll figure something out. These are looking quite good now. Yeah, I think they're looking alright. Obviously I've got to do the colours on the top. This isn't in high res or anything, this is in low res. So I'm filming this. It's not supposed to be showcasing models or or anything like that. I don't want to go stupid high quality. When I say stupid high quality, I mean for me. But I don't want to go stupid high quality on these guys because it's a board game. For a board game, you know, just tabletop is absolutely fine. Which is what I did on Zombicide, and it, it worked out really well. And I enjoyed playing that game yesterday. Although it didn't go as I planned it to be. So we've come to the end of a lot of paints lately, like paint pots, like, like the last of the paint. I've gone for about four or five in like the last week thinking, oh that's the end of that one, that's the end of that one, that's the end of that one. Perhaps I'm using the same paints over and over. I don't know. I mean shade washes go quickly anyway. Like these null oil I've gone through umpteen null oils and Agrax Earth Shades and Seraphim Sepias is the ones I use most. Carabag Crimson as well. And there's a Drakenoff and Nightshade. I suppose those are the ones I use the most. There we are. That's the Jeans Dealers. Oh, I'm washing on the bases. It's a bit of a chore. You've got that much washing to do. Can be a chore. Uh, okay, just gonna have a sip of my tea. Pop my paintbrush down there. Close this one up. Off. There we go. Right, that's securing it. And stop another thing about what I'm gonna do next. It's 
not going to be airbrushing. I'll tell you that. I see what else I can do on this one. Right. Okay. What we need to do a little bit on the scabbard on my um oh what's she called? No. Can't remember the name of Beast Mistress. That's the fellow. Straight out of the pot on this one. Let your brush job to get in. Yeah, my beast mistress, who herself is on a poker chip. Ideal, ideal base size. Now I'm just trying to touch up the leather on the scabbard of her sword. Excuse me. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'm super enjoying the Horus Heresy series of novels. God, oh, man, that is good. Next one in my list to read, which is Fulgrim, that's on the way. But the uh, Flight of the Eisenstein, oh wow, it's just brilliant. It's kind of the view from the other side or another angle. Of the same story that was in the previous book, uh, was it Galaxy and Flames? It's like the same events, but unfolding from a different perspective, different group of uh, characters, you know. And uh, well, some of them are saying they crossed over, and I like that. I really like that. That's good. It's very good writing, um, and I'm I'm happy with it. Okay, so that's her scabbard done. Um, I could use a touch up on some of the bits on her boots. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I've got to start, really start focusing on in the future, especially once I get my studio up and running. And that's terrain, folks. Terrain. Because, uh, I mean, I've got, I've got more than enough terrain. But I need to focus more on building and painting it. And uh, bringing it to life. Um, very I'm a super lazy terrain builder. I mean, some people like the terrain shooter. Just knock out terrain left like that. That's, I think that's just so awesome. I like think, how can you do that? How do you do this? What sorcery is this? Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, Horus Heresy. I'd love. I tell you what, I'd love to get a Horus Heresy um, character some some day, like one of the Primarchs or something. Paint him up. That would be, that would be mental awesome. Really would. I'll tell you something else uh, I want to talk about before we close up here. Just looking at the time. In about half an hour, I suppose. Um, I, want to, I want to get a new series up and running. Yes, another new series. Uh, before you before I hear all the groaning. But another new series, which I'm super excited about. And it's going to be a live series. I was, because after doing a couple of live tests, thinking, well, what can I do as a live show? And, uh, you know, what do people want to see? I don't know. Anyway, I'll cut with uh, the title um, Hangout and Hobby. And hopefully, going to start that next week. And it's going to be a bit like this. And I want to say straight away, right off the bat, it is not going to replace On the Bench because there's two very different um, formats there. And the ethos is different. And why it's, and I'll explain why it's different now. Um, with this, it's a kind of a it's a pre-recorded video, 
and I have everything set up, I've got to get everything set up to hand and sort of think about what I want to talk about to you guys because it's very therapeutic I have to say chatting away and hobbying and painting and stuff it's on my workbench but hang out and hobby is going to be literally just hang out together if you want and hobby and paint, build, whatever just sit and watch and chill out um, that way if I have to get up and leave for something like get another if I need something that's out of reach I don't know, or phone gate or something. You know, I can go and deal with that while you guys chat to one another, and uh, I think it'll be super cool. But uh, and I'm I'm excited for it. Cause I, I love live shows. I love doing a live show. That oh, looks so much better already. You probably can't see from there or in this resolution, but yeah, cool. Um, what was it? Yeah. I love doing the live shows. So that's going to be my new series. Uh, right, okay. And I've got more done than I was intending. What I can do is paint up the goblet from Space Hulk. One more thing to paint. Well, I've got my little servitor droid thing here to do some fun as well. Look at my goblet. Um this goblet here. Uh, how do I want to paint him? I think it will. First of all I'm gonna pop him on a I don't know if I want to paint it um, gold because there's too much gold and everything at the moment. Um, I think I might do bronze. Yeah, what block bronze? That's something I'll do. I'll make it bronze. Then I can put some of that uh, weathering of stuff on it yeah, later on. So where's my rubbishy brush? There it is. Straight out of the pot. Bad form I know. But yeah, so that's going to be my new series. Uh, hang out on a hobby. So hopefully starting next week, I'll, I'll send out some invitations. Um, I appreciate you know, a lot of people can't, you know, it's depending on what time I do it. I'll try and alternate the times I do it be a sporadic event but hopefully I'll give you plenty of warning and then you know also depends what country you're in as well but if you've got enough warning hopefully you can uh, come and hang out with me yeah hang out chat do whatever and I can go off screen if I need to all right that's that what block wrong won't be running out of that anytime soon because I don't use it enough. Let's put that on the bin. Yeah, so there we are. No, I didn't did thin that paint down because I'm not really bothered about seeing all the detail on that one really. It's just a it's just a cup. So yeah. Still trying to figure out this guy. Um I think he's a servitor um, droid, so yeah, figure out that guy. And that pretty much brings me to the end of what I wanted to do today on that. So, oh, saying that, it's got three more bases. I've just, just found, I just found three more gene stealers. How weird is that? So, I'm gonna dig out my null oil again. All right, so we'll do those, and then we'll call it a day for this. So yeah. So anyway, yes. On the bench, still my favourite series to do, and uh, it, it will remain so. More than likely, it's picking up in popularity now. 
So uh, it never used to be the most popular series for me, but I just love doing the videos. I'm just chatting to you. Because like I say, oh, it's very therapeutic. So, so yeah. Now once I've done my orcs, once I've started my orc army, and I'm relatively happy with the way it's progressing in October, October, then um, I've seen someone doing it in August, calling it orc August. Yeah, there's all kinds of uh, plays on words there with that one. Yeah, once I've started that, and I'm kind of semi-satisfied with it, then I'm delving back into Zombicide again with a vengeance to get that up. My aim is to get season two painted and get myself some murderous crows to add to the game. Because I'm finding the dogs add a great new element to the game. And the crows could be even more so. Right. Now, I'm done. So I'm, I am definitely going to end now. So, thank you very much for joining me on this On The Bench With Pete episode. I have I feel I've got tons done. I've got my bases done on, on the ones for my commission job. Um, done a, a complete layer of wash on my all my Terminators and all my Gene Stealers. And uh, painted up a goblet. And uh, a little bit of leather on uh, another model I got, my Beast Mistress. So, super, super awesome. Thank you for joining me. It's been great just chatting away to you guys, rambling on. Until the next time, all brushes lead to a war.